Hi, thank you for joining me today for the 12th stanza. And that is the old ancient Hebrew letter, Lamed or Lamed. And it means staff, goad or stick. And it actually looks like a stick or a, a staff, doesn't it? Yes. And apparently it meant authority. And a shepherd, he would sort of give his um, sheep a little prod when he wanted them to do something for him, maybe some kind of action. So that's what that meant. So last week, Cliff, the psalmist was in some distress, but he knows that God's word does remain the same. Now, that was in stanza 11, and today we're stanza 12. So tell us more how the psalmist is feeling in this stanza, please. This is um, Psalm 119 and 89 to 96. Forever, O Lord, your word is fixed in the heavens. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. You have established the earth and it stands fast. By your appointment, they stand this day for all things are your servants. If your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts for by them you have given me life. I am yours, save me, for I have sought your precepts. The wicked lie in wait to destroy me, but I consider your testimonies. I have seen a limit to all perfection, but your commandment is exceedingly broad. Wow, I love the opening of this stanza when he talks about heaven and earth. And I think the psalmist here can see that God's word is very much settled in heaven. So it's not going to change on earth. So Cliff, what did you get from this stanza? Um, well, one of the things I looked up, the commentary that I looked at, was saying that it refers to the word in this psalm, except for verse 22, apparently. Uh, sorry, 122. <laughs> um, so close. Um, and which was interesting because I did notice that that pretty much everything in these verses is based on the word or his word. I, I found I bounced off other verses from this, which I get I guess is New Testament stuff, I guess, in lots of ways. Because if we believe that Jesus is the fulfillment of the word, then that should happen. We should see the word fulfilled. Uh, by Jesus. One of the thoughts uh, from verse 89, it says, forever, O Lord, your word is firmly fixed in the heavens. I thought of that verse about your thoughts are not my thoughts. And to make sure I got the right quotation, right? Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, for your thoughts are not my thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways are my thoughts than your thoughts. I was actually talking to someone recently about that. When, Whenever I try and second guess what God is doing, he always outwits me. You know, his word is always being fulfilled, um, but I, not always in ways I expect them, because I think, I think I know God. You know, I've been a Christian for about 50 years, and you think by now, I should, you know, like knowing a friend, oh, I'd know them inside out, but I don't think we'll ever understand as it were god someone said that if you understand someone or something then you're greater than that something or someone and i think we'll never obviously be as wise or as understanding as god is so it says your word is fixed in the heavens and i like to think of creation in that that yes. scientists are always working out things I found at one stage that they were disproving each other by saying, oh, the Big Bang theory is no longer true. And then they argue amongst each other. Yes, it is. No, it's not. And you're thinking, hang on, you know, if this is absolutely true, why has it changed? What, what is there different about it? What have you done that you've changed your mind about? But it says here that forever, oh, Lord, your word is fixed in the heavens. Nothing changes. No. Um he, he is the Alpha and Omega, so his word is enduring for all generations. It says 
in verse 90. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. You've established the earth and it stands fast. You you never have a, we need to reboot, you know what I mean? <laughs> because we have equipment nowadays, you think, oh, if you reboot it, it'll work, you know? Oh yeah, fixed it. And thankfully we've never had to say, hang on, the, the, the earth has gone wrong. So we're gonna have to start again. God has established it and all the, the principles that God has made uh, is eternal. It won't change. Uh, you know, gravity doesn't decide to do something different the next day, thankfully. We can rely on his rules, his word. He spoke things into being. You know, it pleased him uh, to create the world. It pleased him to create us. When you were just saying about God's word there with the psalmist, he knew that it was God's word. It wasn't man-made. It wasn't a man thing. It was a God thing. He knew God's faithfulness to him. Uh, and it's also interesting when we think at the time this is written, um, I to hand, I don't know what what sort of time period it is exactly, but obviously it's a huge distance in time. And when you think they knew about God's word in those days, people talk about the oral tradition and things that are being passed on. So I, I thought of my grandparents, actually, um, when one of the family passed away, they signed it with an X. Oh. And it reminded me that, oh, they didn't have schools. They didn't go to school to learn to read and write. They obviously spoke to each other and, you know, told them how to do things. And I'm thinking of this, you know, how probably oral tradition was passed on also the other thing that made me think about this talking about you've established the earth and it stands fast when people argue which obviously they do but oh there is no god or this is all rubbish or whatever the bible says that one day every tongue will confess oh, man. It makes me think that you know what i mean when when the strongest and most uh strongest opposition that anyone has got on earth the Bible says that they will also have to confess that Jesus is Lord, um, which I, I find mind boggling that that one day they will say, yes, it is true. Of course, you know, this is Lord. And um, and of course, that reflects from the word, because, again, as I mentioned, that Jesus fulfilled the word. He didn't replace it. He fulfilled it. By your appointment, they stand to this day for all things are your servants. Again, that is reflecting on the subservience mm. of everything to God and his word. His word will not return to him void, but it will accomplish those things that he pleases. You know, it's a command. It's I can say exactly the same words as God says written down, but there isn't a power without the Holy Spirit, without the backing of God. We can say all kinds of things. The Bible says this, but without the authority of God behind it, you know, we've known of cult leaders who've said, have actually claimed to be Jesus um, and quoted scriptures, but it, it turns out they haven't got the authority. They're not, they're lying basically. And it's not true. I like that verse cliff in Isaiah 40 verse eight, where it says the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God stands forever. Yeah. And that's a great verse, isn't it? Yeah. I, I think we also as well think of the Old Testament as old and the New Testament as kind of newer. But all of it, like you say, it will never stop. God will never say, oh, no, I actually changed my mind about that. I think it's something different. He, he will never, he will never retract his word. He will never apologize because he got it wrong. No. Because it never has yeah and we we can stand on that but in 92 it said if your law had not been my delight i would have perished in my affliction i wouldn't going on to 93 i'll never forget your precepts for by them you have given me life i am yours save me i remember as a i wasn't a child i was probably 19 when i became a christian and i remember thinking about heaven you know, and about the, rely, the relying on God for forever, thinking, can I really trust God? Is Am I going to find out, you know, at the end of all this, is none of this is true. And I remember the Lord said to me, there's no need to be worried. And that was the word, anyone could have said those words, there's no need to be worried. But for some reason, the Holy Spirit took those words because they were from him. 
and gave me that peace, that reassurance. And I can't, I can't explain that in logical terms, why that gave me peace. Um, and the other thing was, actually, I was at school when I read the Old Testament. Believe it, it was actually um, Proverbs I used to read every day. And I used to um, remember the bit where it says, find the word to your heart. Uh, and of course, I, I then realized that the, the Jews literally get is phylactery, is that the right word? And bind it to their arms and to their forehead, as the Bible says. And even as a teenager, I knew that's not what you're supposed to be doing. It, the binding was like close to your heart, close to your mind, uh, yeah, remembering God's word. And, you know, I, I can honestly say I can still remember verses that I learned as a teenager to this day. And God does bring back to your remembrance those things that you've learned. I notice it doesn't say he will bring back to your remembrance things you haven't learned. It says it will bring back to, to your remembrance. And, and I find, and I normally get Bible verses in the authorised version. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's thou not kind of thing. And I thought, well, that's what I learned as a teenager at school, Sunday school. And as an adult, I learned the AV. So that's how it came back to me. I think it's interesting, Cliff, how you said the Lord gave you peace. I think it sounds to me like you needed to hear that from the Lord and the Lord gave you that inner peace that no man can give. And yeah. it is an inner peace that only the Lord can give and that assurance as well. And you also talked about God's word there. I think the psalmist sees God's word as a delight. You were just talking about how you remember the scriptures. Mm. Now, some people see God's word as burdensome for, for whatever reason. Maybe they're very busy or something like that, and they feel like, oh, it's a burden. Mm. But God's word shouldn't be a burden to us, should it? No. No, I think I think that's why I, I was a child. So I went to Sunday school uh, from the age of about five. And I left probably when I was a teenager, sort of, I don't know, I think my friends left and I left and so on. But I always remember in our living room, there was a piano with, with my Sunday school Bible on it, which I won as a bride, which I still got, actually. I'm not sure where it is, but I'll hopefully dig it out one day. And... Um, it had, you know, attendance for a year or whatever. And I got that Bible. I suddenly had inspiration. No one ever said a word. Nothing happened at all. I just suddenly thought, well, I liked reading the Bible when I was at Sunday school. I think I'll, I'll do it again. So I took it upstairs to my bedroom, opened it up next to my bed and decided to read it page by page. You know, the, the blessing that was, you know, when you were stuck in a situation, mm -hmm. the word of God will come back to you and go, oh, that's what I needed for today. There were no daily readings that I had in those days. I just had the Bible. So I, I, I literally soaked up the word every day. And the weird thing I did, which which is slightly funny, really, I used to touch the Bible every night because it was so important to me. I used to sort of, it was like a reverence thing to God. It was like I would touch the pages of the Bible before I went to sleep. I, I have no idea why, but it it was... It was like saying thank you for being there sort of thing. Yeah, and that's lovely. 95. Yes. Um, the wicked lie in wait to destroy me, but I consider your testimonies. One of the quotes I loved, um, I, I think it was in one of his books, Reinhard Bonkin. Sadly, he's no longer with us, but some tremendous ministry from him. Yes. Um, so he's talking about the devil. And the Bible says the devil goes about like a roaring lion, seeking who he can devour. And Reinhardt said, no, he's not a, a lion. He's a mouse with a loud hailer. <laughs> <laughs> I've never forgotten that. And um, the Bible says, if you resist the devil, he'll flee from you. And I and I think that's what happened with Reinhardt, for example. He he was not afraid of the devil. I mean, he challenged the devil. Mm -hmm. uh, the devil fought back. I remember one time that there was a big storm and all his, his tent got blown down. And he says, you know, I'm, I'm going to come back and with a bigger and better mm. tent I think he did yeah and and when I think when it says you know the wicked lay in, in wait to destroy me I think we're going to see more and more as days go on and definitely now I was reading about you know Christians who have been well people get cancelled now don't they they uh, do or, or punished in some way for believing in the bible basically and saying 
we believe what the Bible says. And then if it doesn't fit in with the the current, I'm going to call it sort of morality, I wouldn't even think it's that, the current thinking, then you're out, you're in trouble. And I think it will increase, I think, as times go on, you know, that we, we will end up in, in situations where we'll be persecuted and taken out of society or cancelled. I mean, I guess cancel doesn't sound much, but if you're excluded from society, that is a pretty bad experience. You know? Yes. If your life is excluded from from everyday life. And I think that's what will happen in the last days when we're talking about, you know, taking the mark of the beast and all of that. Mm. And I'm thinking that we'll be excluded from everyday life, basically. But I'm wandering, I'm wandering off. <laughs> but that, that makes me think, you know, the wicked lay in, in wait to destroy me. And I think, you know, in some ways that's happening today in verse 96 i've seen a limit to all perfection but your commandment is exceedingly broad i i try to look it up in different versions of that because you think what do you mean by broad but basically my understanding is from the various explanations of this that it's perfect you know the, the perfection that we see is limited if you like you know if you look at rolls royce for example I remember them saying, we have no mechanism for anything else but perfection. You know, that is our only standard. But when you think God goes beyond every human standard, he He, he doesn't add any sadness to his gifts. You know, we, we get things like, you've got this but, there's a but to it. You know, there's a negative, there's always a negative to just about everything in life, even the the most amazing things but the downside is but with god there is no downside there is no negative and it's blessing upon blessing upon blessing and i, th I think that that is what comes out from his word yeah and i think to sum this up cliff i think that the psalmist here he remembers god's power mm. life-giving power and also he knows that it is God's word that strengthens him because we know that the Bible is alive. It's like a two-edged sword. And here he seeks safety in God's word also. Cliff, thank you for your thoughts today on this stanza. Thank you, Cliff. Thank you.